Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to another installment in our reviewed and ranked series for Ultimate Alliance 3. Today, we are finally starting the paid DLC characters, and we will be going through them in the order that they are acquired until the Fantastic Four, because they're just weird. But that doesn't matter for today's video, because we will be focusing on the Master Marksman Punisher. And this character is a lot of fun and actually breaks the mold when it comes to characters that are based heavily in projectiles. So I'm excited to talk about him as well. In addition to our regular breakdown, I will be dubbing one of his abilities and one of the abilities for all of the characters from this point out as being the move with DLC privilege, meaning that it is a move that works far better than it has any right to, and we will discuss that when we arrive to it. So if you're excited for that addition to this series, please make sure that you leave a like on this video, and don't forget to subscribe for that daily variety content. So to start off, let's talk a little bit about Punisher from a team build perspective. He has five different team build synergies available to him, and though none of them are overwhelmingly good, there are quite a couple of things that are nice to have here. He has a defense synergy with the defenders, he has a strength synergy with anti-heroes, he has a resilient synergy with mech in black, and two mastery synergies with sharpshooters and marvel knights. Now, I do highly value the mastery synergies because it increases the efficiency of your synergy attacks, though I prefer to see energy and strength synergies in a higher saturation as a general rule. However, there's still a lot of things to love about Punisher and how he can augment your team if you're able to get some of those synergies available. Punisher's standard attack sequence has four hits, though it only has three different entries into the carrying out the attack. The first is a fisted punch, the second hit and third hit activate on that second button press and it's a quick little slash with a knife that he draws from his side and that fourth and final hit is a point blank shotgun blast that will create knockback amongst your opponents. And that's really where Punisher shines through is he has a lot of projectile themed weapons in his arsenal, but he doesn't resort to being a strict ranged character, and that already puts him several leagues above other projectile wielders that we've seen, namely Elsa Bloodstone and Hawkeye, as that just makes him a lot more viable, as he's able to counter the incoming attacks before they really take off and cause him problems. Punisher's heavy attack is very unique as well, and this kind of sort of plays into that concept of DLC privilege, but it's not the most broken thing that he can do, so we will be reserving that for a little bit later in the video. His heavy attack has three different stages that you have to rhythmically mash on the heavy attack button in order to get it to carry out. The first step is a volley of uh, rapid fire rounds out of an assault rifle. For the second hit, he pulls out a second and lets loose another volley of those shots with both rifles in hand. And that last hit does launch a grenade out in front of the character as well. Now, the grenade is the portion that has the actual knockdown to it. So unless you are decently distanced from your opponents to the point where you're not going to get attacked into, you will have to have a very lengthy sequence of letting this attack fully take place. But it deals a nice amount of chip damage throughout and is capable of stunning the little grunt type enemies with the first two stages of that attack before uh, re being retaliated against. It's not super great to use in close quarters against any type of foe, uh, but it's not as bad against grunt type characters as it is against mighty and boss type characters that can just shrug off the hits as they're incoming. Punisher does have a mid-air somersault in his jump, which again really helps with maneuverability around a couple of the different hazards that you'll run into, namely a lot of those laser gates that are present within the story quest and he really wouldn't have any reason to have any other ability attached to him. So that's where the discussion on this little bit ends. Punisher's Falling Aerial is not my favorite, and we've seen a couple of them that work in this way, 
And what Punisher does is he will release a shotgun blast from up in the air and it will propel him back a little bit. The reason I like this better than, say, Cyclops' Falling Ariel is it has a wider area of range that it will impact rather than just a single focal point. Uh, but again, with so many Falling Ariel attacks that we've seen so far in this series, Punisher doesn't have anything that will set him up into his falling aerial naturally, meaning that you will have to deliberately jump and activate this attack if you are wanting to use it. And in most cases, it's just not really worth it from the playing around that I've done up until this point. And for Punisher's blocking and dodging animation, he will block by bracing his rifle up in front of him, which is a very unique thing that we haven't really seen amongst a lot of the other uh, cast. I guess Elsa Bloodstone did have a fairly similar animation. And as you dodge out of the way of incoming attacks, you do see that combat role, which is very fitting of Punisher's character, especially where he has that high military background. We can now pivot over to the abilities that Punisher possesses. And the first ability of his is the heavy artillery. And this involves Punisher jumping up a little bit into the air and firing off rounds with his assault rifle that will propel him backwards as those shots are unleashed. So it's a really nice retreating option for him. It's not the greatest in terms of damage that he's able to unleash, but it is very useful in terms of disengaging from situations, especially if you're being closed in on by multiple different opponents. This attack has the projectile attack type, the rapid fire synergy trait, and it has decent stats, having a C classification to damage and energy points consumed, and it does have a little bit of a detriment to the stagger damage with only an E classification in that area. And with all of Punisher's abilities as they are ranked up, they benefit from a reduced energy point cost, an increase to the attack damage dealt, an increase to the damage dealt to the stagger gauge, and finally a reduced chance of the attack being interrupted. Punisher's second ability is the Fire in the Hole ability, and this is a very well-known ability, especially if you've seen a lot of the other tactical members of the cast. Uh, Black Widow is the one that comes to mind where she has these grenades that she'll unleash onto the battlefield that will explode after a time. However, Punisher's grenades do activate a little bit quicker than the other grenades that we've seen from other characters with similar abilities. Not enough to give him the DLC privilege mark on this ability, but it's still a noteworthy item that's worth mentioning. This attack has the energy attack type and the burst synergy trait, and has C's across the boards when it comes to damage, stagger damage, and energy points consumed when using the fire in the hole ability. Punisher's third ability is the winner of the DLC privilege move. And there are a couple of reasons for that and they are good reasons to boot. This ability starts off with a smoke bomb that will blind the opponents and foes and it has the same type of effect as the green mist attacks that are emitted by the green aim soldiers. And that is one of my least favorite uh, components of a fight because it leaves you standard and stunned not able to retaliate. But that's where it's really good as an ability from Punisher because it leaves those opponents in a staggered and vulnerable state. And that includes the mighty enemies as well. And so unless a mighty enemy is deliberately blocking this ability when it's unleashed, it has some real potential to kind of ruin their day. After being blinded with that smoke, Punisher will rush in with a knife and hack and slash away a little bit at the opponents, and it can cover a fair amount of ground in covering back into areas that you may have retreated from with abilities such as the heavy artillery. It has a wonderful classification to damage, having an A rating there, a lackluster rating to the stagger damage dealt with a D, however, it has its own way of circumventing that, so it's not the biggest deal in my personal opinion, and then it maintains that C classification to the energy points consumed. Punisher's fourth ability is the Sniper Shot, and this again takes heavy inspiration from the Purple Aim Soldiers, where you will aim a sniper round that you can charge up. It only reaches a certain amount of charge as you're winding up the attack. Thankfully, it does not continue to eat into your energy points consumed, and you have about 
150 degrees on either side of the character before you unleash the attack. There is a laser sight to indicate where you are aiming, and once you are locked on to a target that will get hit by the blast, the laser sight will transition from red to green, giving you that visual indication of the attack being ready to go. You can hold this attack indefinitely unless you get knocked out of it, and it doesn't consume a whole lot of energy points to be used. However, the downside with this attack is you have fairly slow movement in locking into your opponent, and Honestly, you're not going to be using this attack a whole lot. Now, the AI on your team can pick apart some of your opponents with some deadly accuracy when it comes to using this move, uh, but there are certain drawbacks to having your character locked stationary while, while charging up an ability like this for what amounts to being semi-lackluster damage. This attack has the projectile attack type and the bash synergy trait, has a B classification to damage, and an energy point consumption of C while maintaining a relatively lackluster rating to the stagger damage with that D classification. Punisher's extreme attack is a brutal onslaught of multiple different firearms. It starts off with a couple of blasts from his assault rifles as he'll sweep back and forth unleashing whatever he has in the magazine onto his unsuspecting opponents and it is in a cone type area out in front of him that he unleashes that attack it's followed up with a couple of grenades or grenade launcher type blasts into the central area of that focus and finishes off with an rpg round right into the center of all of that chaos that he has just unleashed it's a very lengthy animation, among one of the longer ones that we have seen, taking almost seven seconds to run in its entirety before Punisher becomes actionable again. It's not the best move when it comes to dealing damage to boss-type characters, because the higher damage portion of this attack and being those blasts at the very end often take place after the opponent has recovered from their stun animation. So it's much better used in situations where you need to break out a bit of crowd control against your opponents. But as long as you are mindful of the direction that Punisher is facing, when you unleash this attack, you're bound to hit a wide array of opponents and free damage is always good. So it's now time for us to determine where Punisher belongs in our tier list. And I've already established that he belongs higher on this list than the other projectile users that we've looked at so far. And the major motivating factor behind that has to come down to the fact that he does not overly rely on projectiles in his standard attack. So he has a lot of potential for retaliating and sustaining himself. Now, I don't think that he falls within the A tier of characters, and we will get to characters later on that rank in this area and higher. Punisher, unfortunately, is just not one of them. So where do I feel that he best fits? Because he has a kind of sort of throwaway ability with his sniper shot, uh, it still deals higher damage than a lot of those other abilities or abilities that work vaguely similar, but at the end of the day, it it just takes way too long to start up to really get any meaningful use out of it. So I feel the best place that I can place him is in B tier, specifically between Storm and Iron Man. And the reason that I've come to that conclusion is Storm has elemental effects that she can cause to her opponents, whereas Punisher does not and that gives him a slight edge over Iron Man, and he has a relatively better kit than Iron Man, but Storm and Loki both have the benefits of being able to cause elemental attributes to their opponents, as well as helping to power up the team in that regard, where Punisher doesn't really have that. Sure, he has that DLC privilege move of being able to stun out large segments of enemies, but at the end of the day, it just really doesn't warrant any higher placement in our tier list than uh, right above Iron Man. But what do you think? Do you think that I have missed anything with Punisher and his kit, what he's capable of? Do you think I've undersold him? Do you think that this is way too high of a ranking? Be sure to let me know in the comments down below. 
And if you've made it this far into the video, make sure that you leave a like, check to see if you're subscribed, fix that if you're not, and I hope to see you in the next video. Take care everyone, and have a great rest of your day.